All right, so we have talked about derivatives, um, which is wonderful, but that is exactly one half of calculus. Now, I'm sure there's stuff I missed, uh, and that will come up, but I think you've got the basic, basic, basics. Um, so now I want to talk about uh, the opposite of derivatives, or anti-derivatives. So uh, I'm going to use physics as an example, because, you know, physics. And uh, I want us to think real quick about this function, which is... Uh, the velocity is equal to, um, uh, yeah, yeah, let's just say velocity is equal to, let's just change it, velocity is equal to time squared plus 4 times time plus 6. Um, okay, cool. Let's just call that y. Um, all right, so this is a velocity function. What information can we get from this? Well, actually, we can get a lot because if you remember, um, you got, you know, displacement and then you got velocity is equal to the displacement over time or in calculus talk, it's dx dt, right? Um, but if you also remember acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over time, which in calculus talk will be uh, dv dt. So if I want to get the acceleration, I can take the, um, in, uh, derivative of this so the acceleration is equal to dv over dt which is equal to uh, that 2 is going to go out front so it's going to be 2t uh, plus 4 uh, because that's 2 1 1 goes out front then it becomes 0 which becomes 1 and that is it I have an acceleration function this is wonderful news however there is one other thing that we can do, um, and that is to actually figure out the, and I'm trying to multitask, which I can rarely do well, uh, we can actually try and figure out the um, position function. So here's the thing. Um, let's just uh, call that y. Let's say um, velocity is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 6. Um, Again, velocity is equal to dx over dt. Well, you've got to think that there was some function that you took the derivative of to get this velocity function. So what if I take the antiderivative? What if I go backwards? Uh, then maybe we might be uh, able to figure out what the position function is. So let's think about it. When we take, uh, let's just say y is equal to x cubed. When we take the derivative dy over dx, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mixing between x's and t's here. What we do is we take the 3 out front, and then we reduce this by 1, right? So it becomes 3x uh, to the 2. So if I had a function... Um, dy dx if I wanted to take the antiderivative and basically figure out what the function y is uh, what am I going to do I'm going to go ahead and add 1 right because I minus 1 here and then instead of multiplying it by that number this new number I'm going to divide by it right 2 plus 1 so what it's going to be is uh, I got an email which is nice y is going to equal uh, so I've got 3x squared, so it's going to be 3x to the power of 3 over 3, because this number now comes undone, these cancel out, and I have y is equal to x3. It is like the reverse process, right? If I take the derivative, um, I do one thing, then if I take the antiderivative, I do the other. So let's let's give it a bash. If this is, um, man, I did it with x's again, let's change it to t's. And I know I'm, I'm flipping between math and physics here. But uh, v is equal to, let me go, v is equal to dx over dt. So let's take the antiderivative to see if we can get the original um, function. So, okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to take t squared. Uh, I have to up this by 1, so it's going to become t to the power of 3, and then I'm going to divide it by that new number, 3. Okay, that's fine. Plus... 4 t to, uh, this is t to the power of 1, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go 4 times t, I'm going to up this by 1 to the power of 2, and then I've got to divide it by that new number, which is 2. All right, and then I have 6. Now, you got to think, this is almost like 6 times 1, or you could even say 6 times t to the power of 0. Remember, anything to the power of 0 equals 1, right? So uh, i got to up this by 1, so it's going to become 6t, uh, and then I'm just going to divide it by 1. That clearly does nothing. So actually, the x function is going to be t cubed divided by 3, 
Uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2t squared plus uh, 6 divided by 1 is just 6 uh, t. Now, there's another thing. Um, this is this is it. Now, this is not actually all the way done. I'm going to show you why. Um, but you know what? Let's just go ahead. <laughs> You're going to get mad at me. Let's go ahead and take the derivative of this just to make sure we, we get it right. Let's make sure we end up back at this function right here. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just take the derivative of it, uh, dx over dt, which gives me the v, which is... All right, so uh, that 3 is going to go out front, so it's going to be 3t squared divided by 3 um, plus... Uh, this 2 goes down, so it's going to be 2... Um, 2 goes out front, 2 times 2t to the power 1. Uh, that's the 1, so that goes out front, plus 6... And that is just about it. If I tidy this up, what I have is 3 over 3 cancels out t squared um, plus 2 times 2 is 4 times t uh, plus 6. And I have got my original function. So I took the antiderivative, then I took the derivative, I got back to where I started. However, this is what we call um, <coughs> uh, indefinite. Uh, because I want you to think, as we went from, oh god, this is messy, but as we went from um, the function, we took the antiderivative down to here, there's always the possibility that there is, this is the, the x function, there's always a possibility that there's some constant c, right? When we derive it, or when we take the antiderivative, that's not necessarily going to show up, but there's always a possibility that there is some constant at the end, because then when I take the derivative of this x function, I'm so sorry that this is so messy, um, when I take the derivative of that, there's always a possibility that, you know, taking the derivative of c just becomes zero, right? It, it cancels out. Um, so that is the antiderivative. Um, it has another name, integral, uh, and I'm going to tell you why we care. All right, so I actually finally redrew this with t. So the velocity is equal to t squared plus 4t plus 6. What we found is we can take the antiderivative, and that will give us what we uh, the position function, right? Uh, but there's some constant there. Um, that we don't know about, but it gives us the position function when we think the velocity is, oh, go back, uh, when velocity is, yeah, all right, go back, mate, go back, all right, uh, velocity is dx over dt. Now, what I want you to think about is, if I have a graph, that's a terrible graph, but let's say this is position uh, as a function of time. Uh, in fact, no, let's, let's change it. Let's say this is um, velocity as a function of time. If uh, I can get two pieces of information, I can get the slope of this is equal to uh, velocity over time, which is equal to the acceleration. But back in physics, I also taught you that if I take like this chunk here, find the area underneath then the area is equal to velocity multiplied by time, which is actually the displacement. Now, I want you to think about something as well. Um, the displacement, let's say this is a simple linear graph, which means the, um, the position versus time graph will be quadratic. Let's say I wanted to find the displacement. Uh, displacement, all I have to do is do x final minus x initial, right? So let's say uh, this is the same time here. All I have to do is find this displacement and then take it away from that displacement, or that position, I should say. This position, take away from that dis position, and I found the displacement. So what am I telling you here? What I'm telling you is if we have a, a function, like this velocity function, and you know velocity is equal to dx dt, I can do two things. Number one, I can come up with a position function, right, um, uh, like I did before, um, but what I can also do is then I can evaluate it for the two different, let's say, the times, and I can find the um, displacement uh, in this. Actually, I'm finding the area underneath because I'm finding the displacement. Let me just, just show you what I mean. Let's just say this is a velocity function. I want to find the displacement between 
uh, between, pardon my handwriting, t is equal to 1 and t is equal to 4 seconds. How far do I go between 1 and 4 seconds? I have got a velocity function. But what I can do is I can take the antiderivative. Um, and we actually, really, I'm not going to call it antiderivative anymore. I'm going to call it an integral. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dx over dt. I'm going to go through all the steps. is equal to 4t plus 6. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dx is equal to, um, uh, let's just put t squared plus 4t plus 6 period dt. Uh, this dt just came up, and actually this is where we have the integral sign. This is like a big S, it doesn't look too good because I'm doing it on my little scratchy pad. Um, this is the integral sign. What it says is I'm going to take the antiderivative of all of this um, with regard to t. t is the um, variable that we are actually taking the antiderivative of. Because, you know, you could have some functions where like y is equal to 3t plus 4zf times, you know, gamma, whatever, you know, there's a whole bunch of different variables in functions. So this is the, the variable that we're taking it off. Obviously, it's the only function here. But I want to evaluate it between 1 and 4 seconds. So 1, 4. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to take the integral. So um, x is now we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. Uh, t squared, so it's going to be t cubed, right? Because this uh, 2 has to be increased by 1, and then I have to divide it by 3. Okay, and then plus 40, uh, we're going to say that becomes 4t squared, because this is 1, so it becomes a 2, divided by 2, because this has to go underneath, in fact, I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit, say so 4 over 2 is 2, uh, plus 6, this is like t to the 0, so we're going to say this is uh, 6t, um, and then there's some kind of constant here, right? Uh, and we're evaluating this from 1 to 4. So what we do is we draw a straight line on the other side, and we go 1 to 4. And that is it. If I now want to find the displacement between these times, all I've got to do is plug in 4, right? Because let's say this is 1 second, this is 4. I don't think the graph would actually look like this. All I have to do is find the position at time 4, and I need to find the position at time 1, uh, and the dis displacement is going to be um, the distance between them. So let's do it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, 4 to the power of 3 divided by, why did I pick 4, man? Uh, plus 2 times 4 squared plus 6 times 4 plus C. All right, so this is me evaluating it for 4. And then I'm going to minus, I'm going to put the whole thing in parentheses, uh, 1 cubed over 3 plus 2 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 uh, plus C. And that is going to give me the displacement. I'm going to pause it while I figure this out. All right, so I just kind of ran the numbers, but I got bored and I couldn't be bothered to, to actually plug it into a calculator. But that will give you the displacement if you do that. Um, so a couple of little things just to point out. Are you working? Displacement? Yeah. Uh, please notice that. Plus C. And then this is minus plus C over here. The C's cancel out. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. doesn't matter at all. They, they cancel out. And what we have uh, found is two things. We have found, number one, the displacement, because basically we've taken this function, uh, found this function, and we plugged in these two values. But again, because of the kind of geometry of it, we have, in essence, found the area underneath this graph. I know that takes a bit of getting your head around, um, but that's it. So um, that is the integral. Um, what I will do is I'll give you a couple of questions to do tomorrow, um, and I'll figure that out then. All right, cheers. Right out.